Six. Caroline Crampton is the web editor for the New Statesman. She's not yet convinced that UKIP represent a serious political force. She's in Westminster, as you see. We're also joined here in the studio by Sebastian Payne, the online editor for The Spectator. He believes UKIP will be a very successful political movement given time. Thanks both for coming in. Sebastian, let's start with you and let's pick up on the point that Martin was making about Essex there. Essex was totemic for the Tories, wasn't it? It was Mondeo Man, it was Basildon, it was the place where people bought their council homes, moved from Labour to Margaret Thatcher. What's going on? Well, I think what we've seen in Essex is a highlights the problem the Conservative Party have got. There's swathes of the electorate who they simply can't appeal to anymore. People who don't listen to them, don't care about what the Tories have to say. And there's been a lot of vox pops, people saying this, you know, I don't really quite know what the Conservative Party offer a normal working person like me. And they don't see Ed Miliband as convincing. They're not convinced by Nick Clegg. So they all go to UKIP. And the fact that UKIP have got 25% of the vote where they've stood is extraordinary. You know, we've not seen anything like that in decades. It really shows that they are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, Caroline, in, for UKIP, Essex has represented a, you know, a decent hunting ground for them. I suppose they'll also point to South Yorkshire, Rotherham in particular, and say, actually, look, guys, it's not just traditional Tory heartlands or recent Tory heartlands, it's Labour's too. Yes, that's true. Although I'm not entirely convinced that this is yet a, a long-running story. This is the first time, as Sebastian says, that we've really seen anything like this. I think until they've fought a general election on a platform like this, it's wrong to make assumptions about it. Yeah. Caroline, what's going on in London? I mean, we've just seen, you know, I know Croydon's not quite London, but Croydon's gone from the Tories to Labour. Uh, Labour's done pretty well uh, in the capital. UKIP's not making a showing there at all. It doesn't seem like it, no. And I know there have been some uh, Labour commentators saying, you know, if Labour can do this well in London, why did we ever lose the mayoral to the election to the Tories? Why have we ever ended up with Boris Johnson? And I think that's something that they're going to look at really hard, that maybe Labour needs to think of London as a stronghold from which they can move up back out into the rest of the country. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Nigel Farage was talking today about targeting specific areas. Let's listen to a, a little bit of what he had to say. There were two conversations going on last night. One was in Westminster, uh, going on amongst the commentariat and Tory MPs who still see politics and the old-fashioned left-right divide. The other conversation was going on in Swindon, where the Labour leader said, we've been hurt by UKIP. Another conversation was going on in Rotherham, where UKIP won 10 seats and Labour won 11 seats. In the West Midlands, the Labour Party was saying, UKIP are splitting our vote and letting the Tories in. And I think this, this idea... Uh, that the UKIP vote just hurts the Tories, I think it's going to be blown away by these results. Nigel Farage, understandably a happy man, but Sebastian Payne, the point is, you could argue, couldn't you, he's got all the rights of publicity and positive publicity this morning, but none of the responsibilities. They're not running UKIP any councils, they haven't got any MPs in Westminster, so they can, they can make lots of noise, but they've got no actual responsibility. Well, the key thing's going to be what happens on Sunday night, which is the Euro election results, and I think UKIP are the only party who've got something to be happy and cheering about this morning. Everyone else is just a bit, oh, well, Labour didn't really do as well the Tories have lost seats, the Lib Dems have lost seats. Whereas you can... We're not going to speculate too much about the European elections for reasons of electoral law. But, of uh, course, yes, on. but uh, <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think the signs are you are going to do well on Sunday. You know, I think people have thought they're going to come first. If they do get that, they do well today. They do well on Sunday. Then they, you know, you cannot deny that they aren't just, you know we hate the EU. People really are buying into them for more than that. Yeah. Caroline, on the point about all the rights and none of the responsibilities, there is, there is that feeling, isn't there, that, that increasingly as they win more council seats, they're going to have to work where there's no over control, overall control with other councillors from other parties and they'll be judged increasingly by their record. Absolutely. And it's the game that all the parties are in at the moment, is they all want eye-catching policies, uh, you know, eye-catching enough to get people to think about voting for them, but also that can stand up to responsible uh, responsibility and scrutiny should they actually act upon them. This is the sort of catch-22 everyone's in. At the moment, UKIP have done the former. They've, you know, caught everyone's eye. They've got people turning out the ballot box. But whether they can do the second half of that and stand up to scrutiny is, I think, yet, yet to be proven. Sebastian, there's Farage, looking every inch, the man that we've come to, to expect, unbuttoned, smiling, uh, playing a, a, a different role. Uh, he says, and he said this week, that he doesn't, he doesn't want UKIP to be a one-man party. He's looking to broaden its appeal, not be a single-issue party, have a full range within the manifesto. He's got to deliver on that, hasn't he? Well, absolutely. UKIP's manifesto from the last 2010 election, you know, we in the media love to pull it apart about some of the, the, the fairly crackpot things that were in there that are not serious. 
serious. But I think they're going to give a hint. Anything in particular you've got your mind I on? Think, um, smoking uh, fox hunting? <laughs> repainting trains and police uniforms and all this kind of stuff, which is not the stuff of a serious political force. But I think following these elections, we're going to get more of a sense from UKIP about what they believe. And if you vote for them in a general election, what that is. And that's the offer that's going to really dictate, you know, can they push through and become a Westminster party? Yeah, I mean, that remains the question, doesn't it? I mean, they, Caroline, they are, uh, they set themselves up against what they call the Westminster bubble, but to some degree, if they're going to be a serious party, one day, heaven knows, even of government, then they need to work out a way of existing within it. Yes, exactly. And I think this builds on what we were saying before, that the, the more publicity and the more attention and the more seats they hold, the more they're going to have to actually uh, deliver on something that they can then point to, rather than pointing to this, as you quoted that bit from Farage there, saying, oh, well, the commentary is saying one thing and we're saying something else. Once they're inside it, they can no longer do that. They've got to have another offer. Caroline, Sebastian, thanks both very much indeed. Thank you.